Hello, this is Brother Cromer from the Math Department. This is a continuation of the Lesson 3 video dealing with describing quantitative data, shape, center, and spread. So now we're at the point where we're covering spread. We let, where we left off is that, uh, looking at how we calculate by hand a standard deviation. We can also get this, in fact, after we have you do this by hand a couple of times, how to do this in SPSS or Excel. And here's an example of where if you use, uh, if you use uh, a software, whether it's Excel or SPSS, it's a couple of clicks or a couple of copy and paste to get the variance and the standard deviation. Here's an example of it here. And this is based off of heart rate data. Okay. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about the uses of a variance and a standard deviation. The use is it determines the average, quote unquote, average distance. It's not exactly the way we think of an average, the average distance from the mean from all the data points. It compares the spread of different distributions. It's a capable of finding percentage of data that approximately falls between certain points of a normal distribution curve, and then it determines the possible outliers. So, for instance, if we, uh, we'll cover this later, but if we have a bell shaped curve, a bell shaped distribution, Approximately 68% of all the data fall within one standard deviation from the mean. Approximately 95% fall within two standard deviations from the mean. And approximately 99.7% of all the data fall within three standard deviations from the mean. Okay. And what we can do is, is that if we go back to, let's see if I can find, if we look at this, if we look at the mean and the standard deviation, if we take the mean and we add a, and subtract the standard deviation, about 68% of the data will fall within one standard deviation from the mean. If we add and subtract two standard deviations from the mean, which is 78, we'll find that about 95% fall within the mean. We'll find 95% of the data fall within two standard deviations from the mean, and almost all the data fall within three standard deviations from the mean. So that's an example of how we can use a standard deviation, especially with a bell curve. And so, conversely, if we know the percentage, of the bulk of the data where it falls within, then we can say that any data outside of two standard deviations from the mean would be considered an outlier and any data outside of three standard deviations from the mean would can be considered an extreme outlier. Okay, So now what I want to talk about is the five number summary. The five numbers are the minimum, Q1, which is the 25th percentile, Q2, which is the median, Q3, which is the 75th percentile, and Q4 is the maximum. Now with Q1 and Q3, basically it's the 25th percentile, basically 25% of the data is lower than that number, Q1 75% of the data is approximately higher than that number, or approximately 75% of the data is higher than that number. And then for Q3, uh, if there's a certain value that represents Q3, 75% of the data is lower than Q3, and 25% of the data is higher than Q3. Okay. So now, so a more simplistic approach in terms of getting Q1 and Q3, Q1 is the median of the data to the left of the grand median, and Q3 is the median to the data to the right of the grand median. Now I'm giving you a big warning here, SPSS and Excel definitions for Q1 and Q3 are different. So you just have to be aware of that when you're cal whether you're calculating something by hand or you're using software to do it for you. Now to calculate this by hand, let me give you an example of this here. If I put in the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. Now first of all, with these numbers, the min we know is 1, the max is 10. The median, since we have an even number of observations, is the middle two numbers here, the average of the middle two numbers, and if we do that, we get five and a half. Okay, so this is the, I'll just put that here, five and a half is the median. Okay, just type in M for me, or I'll just say MED, I'll just spell it out, median, a median. Okay, now Q1 is the median to the left of the grand median. So Q1 is this number right here, is three. This is this is the median to the left of the grand median. There's five numbers to the left of the grand median, which is five and a half here. And then, and so we take the median to the left of the grand median, and it's three. Q, uh, Q3 is the median to the left, or to the right of the grand median. In this case, it is eight, okay? Now, the only thing that changes, say, for instance, if I add the number 11 here, the only thing that changes now is that if I were to, let me just erase this here, erase this, Erase a couple of things here because it's no longer relevant. Okay. Now, if we have if we have it to where we have an odd number of observations, okay, the median now is six. Okay, it's just the middle number. Okay. 
Now Q1 is the median to the left of the grand median. In this case, the median to the left of the grand median is 3, so this here is Q1. Okay. And then the median to the right of the grand median is 9. Okay. And this here would represent Q3. So that's a simplistic example of how to uh, get uh, by hand getting the five number summary. Okay. Now if we're going to do this in SPSS or Excel, there's, uh, you can use either one of those if you have a big data set. But basically, here's an example that I have from SPSS, the five, the five number summary, where you can get the minimum and the maximum, the median. So, so uh, we have three of the five numbers here, but then we get the last, or Q1 and Q3 here in this bottom box. Now, you notice here that in Q3, we have two different results. It's because there's two different algorithms that uh, are used to calculate Q th or, or e either one of these rows in this case. Now sometimes with the algorithms the numbers match and sometimes they don't. You can say the same thing with Excel too. Sometimes these numbers will match and sometimes they won't. So you just have to be uh, wary of that just so if you find different numbers it doesn't freak you out. Okay. So then what I like to do is now what I'd like to do is talk about the box plots. Now box plots are, re are a graphical representation of the five number summary. Where this, so if you look, here's an example of a, five, of a box plot where this is the minimum, this is Q1, this is Q2, the median, this is Q3, the top of the box, the highest part of the box, and this is the maximum. Now we can get an idea in terms of what type of distribution it is. Uh, say, for instance, so what I, my rule of thumb is, is that if, if we have a median here and the and the minimum is further away to the median than the maximum is away from the median, then it would be a left skew distribution. If the maximum is further away from the median than the minimum is from the median, then it could be a right skew distribution. But they're, if they're about the same, then we can say that, 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 that they're symmetrical. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to pull up an example briefly here. Now usually, the, usually if the, the, for the whiskers, which is, which is described in the online textbook, the bottom part, this here normally represents the medium, the median, or excuse me, the minimum. And this here represents the maximum. However, if we have if we have stars or or dots below or above those whiskers, then the lower point represents the minimum, and the highest point represents the maximum. Okay, so you just have to be mindful of that. I think that's primarily you have to worry about that with SPSS, but not so much when you deal with Excel. Okay, and that concludes part two of the lesson three video. If you have any questions, please speak to your instructor.